since, since you're gone there, I'll give you a warning too. There's a dog asleep under my window, so if you hear him snoring, it's not me sleeping, okay? Okay. <laughs> I might just think it's you farting. No, that was the other night. <laughs> no, you got you got any little ones, as in little people. Animals? Does that count? That'll count. All right. Fur babies. <clears throat> fur, fur babies. Fur babies. That's what my wife calls them, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, fu- funny uh, moment the other night. So the wife and I are in the in the kitchen cleaning up after dinner and just having a bit of a chat. You know, she's doing the dishes. So I'm putting stuff in the in the dishwasher and I'm getting it all done. Hear my daughter from the other end of the house. Mom! Don't really think much of it. She usually does the, Mom, I need to tell you something. And then it's just nothing. So I don't think much of it. Just keep doing what we're doing, having a chat. Mom! Oh, God. What's going on here? Then she yells out again, Mom, my poo was so big that it splashed my bum. <laughs> That's oh, something no. she's got to tell Dad, not Mom. That's top. Oh. <laughs> so she's yelling out from one end of the house to the other, letting us know uh, the proud dad moment that it was. <clears throat> and, um, of course, you know, being there was a proud dad moment, I've come running down the other end. Pissing myself laughing and gave her the high five. <clears throat> well, yes. well done. And, and what happens? I'm the one that gets in trouble for the high five. Oh. What's going on there? I don't know. <laughs> proud dad oh. moment. How about that? <laughs> well, I'm proud of you for that one. Well done. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, with that said and done, let's start the show, eh? Episode 186, and today is Wednesday, the 13th of September, 2017. Welcome to the Aussie Gamers Express Video Game Podcast. I am your host, Lucas, and here with me is my co-host and very good friend, Smooth. How are you, mate? Podcast day! Yeah, proudest punch dad on the podcast day. <laughs> I know. <laughs> How are you, mate? Yeah, look, I'm good, thank you very much. But I have to say, mate, that was a shit story. Oh, terrible, and that was a shit story. Let's move on. Oh, you could have heard it. I've got something to do with you, right? Um, actually, looking forward to, to jumping on in and um, chatting with yourself and our very special guest. Are you going to... Well, also with us today, our special guest from Gaming with Anarchy and a long-time age supporter is Ross Mark. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, guys. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, no worries. Thank you very much. A very, very heartfelt welcome to you, my friend. Now, uh, you have been a very long-time supporter from uh, of Aussie Games Express. Uh, when Continue. did you uh, jump on board? Do you remember? Um, late 2015. Wow, okay. So, yeah, a few years there. That's pretty good, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mate. It was a pleasure to bring you on board now that we're doing our special guest every week. So, uh, good to have you on, man. Thank you very much. All right. Well, look, before we start the show, here is the show in preview. First up, we'll do video game discussion, then we'll do video game news. And in this week's news, we've got PewDiePie's racial slur, Resident Evil in 8-bit, and LA Noir remaster coming. Then we'll do user-created content, what's that sound, and last words. So... First up with video game discussion, we'll throw Ross into the hot seat like we like to do. Over to you. Um, gaming news for me, or what have I been gaming? What have, what been have you been playing? Um, what have you been doing gaming related this this week? It's it's a short list actually. Destiny Understandable. Two. Destiny I think, I think two. Everyone's been the same, haven't they? Um, well, I think no, most I, of us, yeah. Yeah, but before I jump into that though, actually, I did play a little bit of Battlefield One. Oh yeah. After the latest patch. Um, I wanted to jump back into that with the patch and see how that changed things a little. Did and it change anything? Yes, it did, unfortunately. 
Oh, what changed? Unfo- unfortunately. <laughs> uh, most of it's sort of good. Look, you've got all these new weapons, um, new maps, everything else in that thing, but they've added new challenges. And one of the challenges that's there is to get kills as the medic class with the syringe. Oh. Uh, previously, you could syringe someone and kill them in one hit. Now you syringe them about five times and they still don't die. Oh, why would they change that? Add add the the challenge and then make it stupidly hard. Yeah, so that's confused me a little bit. Um, well, you're I mean, supposed I'd... to be a medic, not Doctor Death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mister Kavorkian, this way, please. Thank you. <laughs> you can you can carry two syringes, one to revive people and one with poison that kills them. What if you accidentally what, what? get them mixed up and poison your mate? <laughs> then you're going to have a very bad day. Then they're screwed, aren't they? Anyway. Yeah, your mate's um, going to have a bad day anyway. Yeah, but I mean, but I mean, before the patch, I used to run around and syringe people and get kills all the time. Um, mm. Now, I've got one out of probably four or five hours at least playing, trying to do it. Okay. So it's made, could, look, made it quite cause this, The syringe is essentially a form of melee, yeah? Yes, that's correct. It's like the old school sort of uh, Call of Duty knife. Yes, yep, Exactly. Yeah, okay. And now so, they've made it... What's, is that like a bug, or is it like four or five times now, it's just legit, that's how many times you need to, to stab them? Uh, I really don't know, but I mean, that's just from what I've seen, is that you have to go around and literally stab them a number of times to get the kill. Um, so what I've been doing now is I've been running up close to them, hitting with a pistol two or three times without and get killing their health them, down. And, then, and then, yeah, get their health down and try and get that final kill with the syringe then, which still counts. Um, yeah, that's but of hard. course, as soon as you, as soon as you start hitting with a pistol, they generally turn around and just mow you down with an SMG or whatever they're mm. running. So, yeah, it's a, it's a real challenge now, which is which is good in the sense of it is a challenge, but it's bad in the sense that they've made it so much harder than it was previously. See, that's, that's I think that's one of the uh, one of the downfalls to the the, the modern day gaming where. You know, you could, developers are patching things and nerfing things and changing things. Where on, you know, you if you if you enjoy things on day one, and then they change it for you on day, you know, two hundred or whatever, a couple of years down the line or something like that. Like that's that's it removes why you enjoyed it in the first time because you might have been enjoying it for that reason. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can I can understand that it being a one hit kill previously was a little bit over the top. You know, if they had to change it to be a two hit kill, two stabs and they die, I could, I could, I could, I would be okay with that. I could understand it. But as I said, I've literally stabbed people four and five times and they still haven't died. So, well, being I'm, a syringe, yeah. I would expect that maybe. Uh, look, what would be fair is if you had to at least hold it in their proximity, so hold it on them for maybe a second and a half, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe that like you have to be real close up to them when you're injecting them without running away straight away because like it's syringe you've got to put it in plunger it pull it out yeah yeah i mean i mean yeah that 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 makes total sense but i mean i snuck up behind a a sniper who was just laying on the top of a hill not moving yeah and i snuck up right next to him laid side by side with him basically and hit him three times before he turned around and, and just smashed me with his pistol and stuff then so yeah yeah it's that little... sounds wrong. Or even if it was like a delayed response. So let's say that you got your one jab in, there was like a three or four second delay between them dying. So like, like the, the poison to, to take effect. To take effect, yeah. So that, like mm-hmm. even that would, I would understand because it would give you the chance. It is still a one hit kill, but it still gives them a chance to turn around and get you back, which would be realistic yeah. because, yeah, not all drugs that you inject are instantaneous like i guess some are maybe but uh i don't know that 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 sounds like a a little bit of a broken mechanic they've added to it or at least something that changes the game enough to be a little bit annoying but anyway yeah so so that frustrated me for a little while so i changed from trying to do that challenge to do other bits and pieces and just ran around and sniped and ran the uh, hell regal for a while and tried to work on the new weapon unlocks so, nice. What what are you playing on? PS4 or Xbox One? Uh, PS4, yes, for that one. PS, PS4. And you're live streaming? Yes. Most of the time? Um, I haven't in the last week because I had some family issues, which a lot of people now know about. Um, yep. But yes, I have, been, I have been previously. So Okay. And what's your channel? It's on Twitch? 
channel on Twitch is Oz Anarchy or twitch.tv slash Oz Anarchy. Okay, AUS Anarchy, right? A A U S Anarchy, yes, A N A R C H Y. Cool, there you go. Anyone listening, go and uh, give that uh, channel a follow. It's follow, isn't it? It's a follow at this stage. I am very close to being able to apply to get the sub button, so Ooh. the follows would, would certainly count at this stage, that's for sure, people. Yeah, we're going, go and help out, Ross. Not be happy. Give him a follow, give him a watch, all that sort of stuff. Even if you're watching for a little bit, it all, it, it, it all helps for statistics and, and getting it up there. Give exactly. your uh, fellow the one that, gamer support there. The, the one thing I like doing is chatting to people in the in the chat too. So if you do drop in, just say hello. Yeah, that, that's the best thing, isn't it? Like, And that that's the best thing about, say, uh, smaller streamers, is if you've got 5, 10, 15 people in the stream, you've got a chance of being heard by the streamer. Like where if you if you go and you watch someone that's got fifteen thousand people watching, it, it, there's the, the the chats scrolling a million miles an hour. Nobody's going, no one's going to reply to you. So it's good to exactly. good to actually have a chat with the the streamers, which is pretty cool. Uh, what what else you've been playing, man? Other anything other than Destiny or? Should, maybe um, that one. No, there is there is one more. Uh, oh, I yeah. jumped on Titanfall two again for a brief period. Right. Um, um, which console is that one on? On Xbox. On Xbox One, that is. Yeah, very good. Um, so yes, I am on both consoles, of course. And um, yeah, yeah, just had a bit of a run around there, a bit of multiplayer, a bit of the um, horde mode. The um, oh god, I can't even think of it now. Yeah, I I can't remember the what it's called either. I tried to get into that, but it, it I couldn't find a game the other day when I was trying it. What were you on? Were you on Xbox as well? Or were you that on... was on X. That was on Xbox. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, me and a friend have played it. We didn't play it the other day when I played it last, but we have beforehand. We've streamed together and that thing. Um, and we've we've been able to find games most times. Um, sometimes you do sit there for a couple of minutes and wait to be able to find a game, that's all. Um, mm. But yeah, just, just jumped into Titanfall for just something a little bit different again, just to have a bit of run around. Nice. Um, and then I guess the, the big one, which I think we're all going to talk about quite a bit, will be Absolutely. Destiny 2. Yeah, Destiny Sorry. 2 came out last week now, but it was after the podcast we did last week. So it's now out. We've all played it. I think we've all finished the campaign. Is that is that right? Mm-hmm. That's correct, yes. We all smashed it and we all love it. So, Ross, what do you think of Destiny 2? I'm enjoying it. It's fresh. It's new. It's built upon the original Destiny. Um, there's not a lot I can say that's negative about it. There's little things that don't irk me, but there's little things that I wish that I'm hoping that maybe they improve. Oh, what's that? Um, um, well, one of the things is, like, I, I play in a fire team with a couple of people a lot, and when you go to your map, you can't see where your friends are. Yeah, I've noticed that. So I'm I'm kind of hoping that maybe they just put, like, like a little marker, like, you know, you've got the little green triangle, make your two teammates little blue ones, tell you where they are on the mini map kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, that's rather, a... Oversight. Yeah, I mean, rather than just looking off in the distance and looking for their name tag, give, give the people a chance to be able to see each other where you are on the map. Because um, I had an issue the other day when I was on Xbox with one of my friends said to me, oh, I'm just going to fast travel here because there's a public event starting shortly. And I'm like, yeah, no worries. I finished doing what I was doing in my menu. Sorry, where'd you travel to? He's like, oh, somewhere. So I'm in the public event now. I'm like, okay, I can't see a public event on my mini map, so I don't know where you are kind of thing so yeah it would make would, it easier yeah i mean it's, it's such a little thing and it's it's nothing that's game breaking in any way um but i mean i'm i'm on both consoles for destiny 2 i've completed the story on both consoles with one character each and i mean even though i've been busy with family and, and real world stuff i've put in quite a bit of time playing and i'm really enjoying it you want to finish the story on xbox for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I've, I've, still still, I've, I've, I've still got four more characters to finish in total, but yeah, sure. Yeah, why not just chuck another one in there? What's five? It's all right. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. Yeah, well, but that, that issue with the map and your friends or whatever, I think that's something that that'll probably happen. That'll come. I certainly think so, and I certainly hope so, that's for sure. Hmm. But yeah, so you're you're really enjoying it. What's your character class? Main, cla- main. Uh, uh, depends on console. 
Um, PlayStation name? The, on the PS4, I am running a Hunter yep. as my main. And on the Xbox One, I'm running a Titan as my main. Okay. Um, but I mean, as I said, I am running one of each one of each character on both consoles. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, look, I, I've gone down the uh, the path of the Warlock, which I didn't realise was getting a lot of shtick because it's uh, <laughs> apparently known as uh, the the OP character. Well, in Destiny One, it was. I don't know. Is it? Do you think is it still the case in Destiny Two for the Warlocks? Truthfully, I don't think there ever was any OP character in Destiny 1 or in Destiny 2 at this stage. I don't I think, think so either. I think they've all got their role to play. They've all got their strengths and weaknesses. Absolutely. And the thing is, in a lot of cases, those who haven't played as a Warlock, when they face them in Crucible, they go, oh, that's bullshit. They can't do that. You know, they're OP kind of thing. Well, they're not. Just that you don't understand how to play as a Warlock and then you don't know how to play against it if that makes sense yeah I, um, i've been a warlock since day one on destiny one well, even since the alpha i don't know why i went i just that was just i rolled the dice and i went with a warlock and from the alpha to the beta to the main full game of destiny i went warlock and destiny 2 i was toying with the idea of changing but i never did i went straight for the warlock i mean look as i said like i, I don't think there's anyone that's I mean, they've all got their strengths and weaknesses, as I already said. And that's that's why I play one of each character, because I can then understand where their strengths and weaknesses are and how to use that to my advantage and how to avoid being killed in Crucible um, mm. as much as possible as well. Now, am I right in saying oh, you don't have a Warlock character, but did, 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 with the, did they remove the resurrection thing? Yes, they did. They completely removed that, and you've now got the Dawnblade. So instead of being able to self-revive, you've now got the sword, the flaming sword, where you can just rain fiery hell down upon your enemies. Yeah, which is really good. <laughs> Excuse fiery. me. Uh, yeah, look, that that is a real good uh, super, but, oh, geez, that, that revive was so good for nightfalls and, and uh, raids. It certainly was. Mm, but anyway, that's the past. Moving forward, I'm really enjoying... The Crucible. Godsmack. Yeah, a little, little <laughs> surprised at that one. Well, look, those <clears throat> that know me know that for the longest time I've never been any good at any real PvP game. I've I've not... That's just not my strength. Like, I, I used to be good back in Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 1 and 2 days, online, multiplayer, all that sort of stuff. It all disappeared. For some reason, I don't know what it is, I just have this ability to play Crucible a lot better than I ever have. I've been coming first. I've been first on my team in a winning game. 28 kills, 4 point something proficiency, which I think is your KD KD ratio, isn't it? Kind of. Kind of something like that, but anyway, kind it's of. all been it's all been positives, but not just positive like one and a half or whatever. I'm like four and five proficiencies in the game, and I had a sixteen streak today. That's what, good. What's going on? Why am I doing so well in Crucible in Destiny Two? I can't do this in Destiny One. After I played the beta for Destiny Two, I went back to Destiny One thinking I might enjoy it, and I sucked big time. Do you have any answers for that? Snoogs, do you want to hit that one first, or do you want me to... Anyone? No, I, I, I've got nothing. I'll, it's it's actually quite funny. I, I um, the, only, the only first-person shooter game that I really play is uh, Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah. Other than that, I haven't really touched them. I didn't touch Destiny 1, uh, and COD can just sort off, really. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> just not interested. Like, just not interested anymore. So my whole thing behind actually getting Destiny was... I'm really enjoying playing with mates. Like we had a great run around. We've got a whole group of friends. I've got friends on Xbox and PS4 that all want to run around and, and play this. I'm like, well, oh, that's fantastic. You know, that's my social interaction. That's that's what I wanted. But I've actually found myself being able to hold my own. You know, I, I, I thought I'd be the numpty that everyone had to sort of carry through missions, but no, I, I seem to be holding my own. In, in Crucible, yeah, not that crash hot. Um, but as I get used to the maps and, and whatnot, 
that, that'll change. But like I've only probably played five rounds of Crucible. But um, yeah, I, I don't understand it. It's it feels yeah, fresh. See, it feels quick. It's Snoogs, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that you do well in Destiny Two and that you're enjoying it because of your interest in the division, which isn't leaps and bounds from what you're doing in Destiny. I mean, they're very different games, but the like the the genetic makeup of them, I guess, is very similar. Yeah, very similar. Mm. That 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 side of it, it's just that um, that different perspective, I think. But um, yeah, yeah, it's I'm I'm having a lot of fun with it. I am a Titan, which is pretty much just Hulk smash, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> it's 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 taken me very much by surprise. Yeah. Now the story. We've all finished the story. Now we won't spoil anything here, but what I wanted to specifically mention is the story. The way I felt playing through Destiny Two, I actually knew what was going on, and I actually had an appreciation for the characters. That it, it, it just feels like Destiny One did absolutely nothing in the way of making anything understandable. It was all sort of hush hush read the grimoire cards if you want to know what's going on and it was basically non-existent terrible crap the game was still fantastic the story didn't really give any sort of like background as to why you're doing what you're doing it was sort of just really vague whereas destiny 2 has completely corrected and righted all of that all the way from start to finish you i've i've learnt the characters and there are characters in there. I'm like, oh, this is a this is a great new addition to the characters in Destiny. No, it's not an additional character. That character was in Destiny One, but they just did fuck all. So you, I didn't I didn't know they existed. Whereas now in Destiny <laughs> Two, we've got all these great characters that were in the first one, but they've actually been portrayed properly, and there it's it comes across really well in Destiny Two. I think the story is great. It's epic. It's on a massive scale, and it, it, it serves as a real good beginning to Destiny 2, which the story in Destiny 2, would you guys agree with me, is really like 5% of the the game? The story in Destiny 2 is about 5% of the game? Yeah, like the story in this kind of a game is really only kind of, the, the, the starting point. Yeah, it just starts it yeah, off. Yeah, I'd, I'd say 5 to 10%. Yeah, that, that's accurate. Yeah, because... You might spend, what is it, 10 hours campaign? Is it a 10-hour campaign, thereabouts? Yeah, about that. You might spend um, 10 hours doing a campaign. Let's say 7 to 15 hours, depending on how you play. But you're yeah. going to spend hundreds of hours playing the, the, the end game content, which is plentiful, and it's, it's all there. Destiny 2 is, I think, for the, for the most part, faultless at this point in time. Now, obviously, there it does have its issues, but you know, so I'm, it's an exaggeration here. But it's 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 gr- it's fantastic. Agree. Okay. For someone who's never played it before, mm-hmm. like no, I've got no, I've got no issues. Yeah, good. No, no concerns about little like any little glitches or whatnot. I haven't noticed. I've had a little bit of, you know, stuff in in cutscenes and whatnot that. But it's something that you see out of the corner of your eye because the cutscenes are on such a massive scale. There was uh, one or two nights where I found myself, I got to uh, 10.30 at night. And usually I'm up till, you know, midnight, one o'clock. And got to 10.30 at night and I'd been playing, you know, since eight and just playing the campaign. And got to 10.30 and I was wiped. Just, nah, I'm done. See you later. I'm gone. And it was just because the campaign had me drawn so far in and just, you know, racing. It was, it was so intense. There, you know, the, the music just gets you, you know, it's not, not, a, not, a, not a campaign where you just sort of sit back and enjoy the scenery and enjoy the story. I'm sitting upright. I've got, you know, the hands up on the desk. I'm completely and utterly finding myself leaning closer and closer to the screen because it's just an engrossing story that I want to know all about. And yet it wiped me a couple of times, just 10.30. I'm starting to nod off. It was, see us. (laughs) I'm done. 
No, that's mm-hmm. I, I understand where you're coming from with that. And uh, something I've got to say as well to people that didn't play Destiny One, ignore the fact that Destiny One existed. Don't even worry about it. Go straight into Destiny Two, and because just enjoy. yeah, and just enjoy it because there are so many things in Destiny Two that you could do in Destiny One. But they've just simplified it and make it made it really easy to understand what does what. I can I have now uh, what's the word when you when you break down a higher powered weapon and put put the power into another weapon. Infuse. When you infuse, that's it. You infuse. I, I think you could do that in Destiny One, couldn't you? Yes. You could, but I I never did it once, and I, I have no idea how to do it. It is so simple to do in Destiny 2. You press triangle on top of your weapon. So let's just say I've got a, an exotic that I love using. It's it's a beautiful gun. It plays well. It feels good. It's an auto rifle. I love it. And then I get a, a legendary drop, which is one down from an exotic, but it has more power. But it's the same class. So it's an auto rifle, same as my exotic. I can infuse that legendary weapon into my exotic and my exotic takes on the power sometimes even more if i'm not uh incorrect on that the power from that from that legendary into my exotic so i can still use the same gun but it's more powerful now and it's so easy to do you hit triangle on the gun go down to the it'll show you a list of the guns that can be infused and hold square as long as you've got the right bits and pieces for it. It's as easy as that. And, and I never did it in Destiny 1, because I don't know. I don't, it might have even been that easy. I don't know. but It was it was pretty similar to Destiny 1. But yeah, you could cause... literally infuse a primary with a primary. It didn't have to be an auto rifle or an auto, auto rifle. Mm-hmm. So you could infuse a hand cannon into an auto rifle previously. Oh, really? So that's Yes. So that's one little change I've made now, which I actually like, because it does mean that you have to get the same weapon... Yeah. Like kinetic weapon, but yeah. then also the same weapon type being two auto rifles. Yeah, was it so was it, it makes, as simple? Was it as simple? Um, yes, pretty much. You you literally uh, yeah hit triangle on the the weapon you wanted to infuse up, um, find what you wanted to infuse into it, and and still hold square. But you had to have the glimmer and the legendary shards, which you still have to do in Destiny Two, of course. Okay, they've not changed that at all. I was just a numpty. <laughs> no, no, no. There, there, as I said, there was one minor change where an auto rifle to, into an auto rifle, scout mm. rifle, scout rifle. Yeah, you know, yeah. Which, which, I, which I, as I said, I think is a good improvement and change. Yeah, um, but uh, any anyway, other look, maybe it's just my enthusiasm for the game, which has made me sort of seek out how that works, and I, I worked it out on my own, didn't even get told. Well, I got told that it existed, but I worked out how to do it on my own, and it was easy enough to work out, which was cool. I think the other thing is having had a break from Destiny 1 for a while. I mean, you hadn't played it other than, as you said, going back and playing just after the Destiny 2 beta. Um, yeah. You know, having had a break from it, you come into looking at things with a fresh eyes for Destiny 2, and you pick yeah. up on those little things. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. But look, yeah, I, I've got I've got not really anything to, uh, bad to say about it other than the couple of little niggly things, but uh, those things will probably be patched out. Uh, and I'm enjoying Crucible. It's something that I probably have already played more Crucible matches now in one week than I ever did on Destiny 1 in, in the last three years. And uh, I'm winning more matches than I'm, than I'm losing, and most of those wins I'm in the top three of my team. So... Naturally, I'm enjoying it. My thumbs are actually really sore right now. Hang on, can I say top? Can I say top three of your team? There's only four in the team. Shut up, asshole. That's My right. point was, <laughs> I'm normally <laughs> dead last. No, that's that's. No, look, I'm not saying anything against you, Luke. But I think the thing <laughs> is, like, I, I'm glad you bring up Crucible again because I didn't get a chance to say that the change between Destiny One to Destiny Two with Crucible is that Destiny One's gone from six v six. Mm. The Destiny 2 being 4v4. 4v4, which yeah. I, which I think makes it a little bit easier. In the, not that, like, this is not trying to be negative in any way. It makes it easier because if you run as a group, you can pick off their individual players. Mm. And then you can pick off their two or three when you've still got three or four of your guys. Yeah, but that, that's, that's the thing that's tricky. Most of me playing 
I've been playing it solo, just with randoms. Mm -hmm. So yep. it's really hard. Like I essentially have to sort of watch where my my teammates are going and try to keep up with them and 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 follow yep. them because we're not talking. Uh, it's it's hard to sort of like uh, even so, like. It I was going to say, even so, you're not communicating, but you're still mm. strategizing and working out that, okay, this is where two of my three teammates are going. I'll yeah. follow them so we've got numerical advantage, mm. or, or it might be 4v3, you know, kind of thing. That's exactly what way. I do, yeah. That's you the know. thing. Like, if I see two branch off, I'll go with the two, because that means there's three versus however many enemies we come across. Yeah. Combined fire, can't beat it. But but I think that's the thing, is it, that's what I'm saying, is in Destiny 1, it was 6v6. You'd have yep. two people go this way, two people go that way. Then to say, you know, and mm. you've all split up, and then you know this group A of two of your two teammates come up against four guys, and they get wiped out. Then those four guys sort of sweep around behind you and your friend, you get wiped out because they've got numerical advantage coming. Kind of. Yeah. Whereas this being being fully for that smaller game mode, you think about it and you sort of stick with the numbers, and you you can't go wrong really. Yep, I I, I think that probably is the difference. Is the the 4v4 rather than the 6v6. But, uh, yeah, good on them. I like it. Uh, now, what's something I wanted to ask you, because I know you'd probably know. Can I mm -hmm. choose the game mode, or can I only do uh, the uh, the playlist? Okay. there's only, At this stage, there's only the playlist. So you've got the quick play and you've got the competitive. Yeah. Quick play comprises of... Um, uh, what's it called? Oh. Uh, ca the capture the flag mode. You capture um, the like flag domination. or domination. Yeah. Then there's like the kill Something. confirmed. <laughs> just the kill call confirmed, of duty. The call of duty terms. Yep. Um, and then there's just the the team deathmatch version. The I kind of get the clash thing as well. Clash, clash. That's the one. Yeah. Okay. And then in competitive, you've got. Um, oh, that's got the, like the uh, like the limited lives. It's like seek and yeah, destroy. Yeah. So survival. 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 That's it. Yep, and then the S&D mode is with the bomb that you set and fuse. I can't remember what it's called now either. Um, and I think there might be a third mode, but I haven't played that one as yet. No, I've Not only sure. played the, the two. Maybe there is only the two. There might only be the two. But yeah, no. Lots of okay. Destiny 2 Crucible. Yeah, but at this stage, they're the, they're the two playlists. They may introduce individual playlists later on down the track. Yeah, I hope they do individual playlists because I I really like the uh, the clash mode, the, the TDM. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't mind if they introduce individual game modes like lists as well as keeping that combined one so you can play like a mix still. Yeah, it's good to have on the combined one. Rotation. Yeah, but yeah, my thumbs are my thumbs are. I've actually got skin coming off on my left thumb. Um, I've got arthritis in my, my thumb at the moment of late because I damaged the tendon and yes, my thumb is sore from gaming and that's why I'm sitting. Um, Sorry, that's, that's why you're what? That's why I'm sitting here and holding on and squeezing my stress ball. Ah, uh, right. Get some, uh, Voltaren, Voltaren Emil gel, my friend. It's a lot. Yeah, I've, I've got that too. But I was going to say my stress ball is actually an exotic engram. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I want to see a photo so, of that. You're going to have to take a photo and send it to us after the show. I've, I've actually got the set of four. I've got the common engram, the uncommon engram, the legendary engram, and the exotic. Where did you get them from? EV Games. Oh, that's sick. Oh, no no promotion to, there. but <laughs> I'm going to keep an eye out for that and grab some. Yeah, I'll send you a photo after the podcast. Awesome. All right, man. Well, look, anything else from either of you guys about Destiny? Not from me, mate. It's 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 all been said. Um, no, I mean you you touched on the storyline. That's fantastic. I think the thing is that a lot of people don't realize a lot of side quests you can do afterwards. Still, there's heaps. In terms of, and you, like I spend a lot of time. I'm one of those people that spend a lot of time grinding side quests to get to levels before I continue on the story. Sometimes, mm -hmm. so I I did do a lot of it as I leveled to start with and played the story, which distracted me because then I'd find more side quests, but if you leave them to the end, and this is still not giving any spoilers, if you leave them to the end and then start doing them, you start picking up some better gear for when you start to get towards end tier gaming. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah, leave them. Just do the story. Get it all done because that unlocks a fair bit of stuff after you've actually finished the campaign. And exactly. then you'll take full advantage of uh, all those um, side, side missions. Yeah, you do just enough to get your level just where you need to be to continue the story kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. 
Nice. All right. Uh, did, would, did you have anything else, uh, Ross, or was that your your week? That is my week in terms of gaming. Okay, no worries. Uh, Snoogs, what do you got, man, other than Destiny, if anything? Um, well, last week we had uh, a stick on the show. We also mm-hmm. had a, a late inclusion with uh, Greggio. He popped over to say good day and, and hung around and uh, jumped on the show with us for a little while. So after the show, we had another drink, chilled out for a bit, and uh, chucked on the Xbox and played a bit of Splosion Man. Good game. I tell you what, though, we were at the. I couldn't figure out how to restart it to to restart the the co op section of it. I just, for whatever reason, we couldn't find out where to do. So it started us where you and I finished. Okay, yeah, continued on, yep. Yeah, yeah. So at ten thirty at night with two hotheads trying to play that, we didn't play it very long. <laughs> um, spat the dummy. Oh, uh, spat spat the dummy, and then because because Greg hadn't hadn't really looked much into the game of pass. I was I was flicking around and showing him. So we had a few rounds of um of King of Fighters and also being that I know Greg very well, I know what he's like and I know certain things that can trigger certain parts of his nature. <laughs> I turned on Alex the Kid. Right. And gave I mean, him I'm... and ga- gave him the controller. I'm guessing he gets. Does he get mad? He doesn't strike me as a as a rager. <laughs> no, not so much mad. He he knows that he's finished it before. He knows that he he played it a lot as a kid, yeah. and so I knew that that would be all right. I have to beat it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so there was a um, a spot where he would. All right, cool. No worries. Okay, we've got to get, we've got to go and get collect this. We've got to go and collect this because we've got to get the speeder bike at the end of. The- All right, cool. <laughs> Bang, dead. Start again. All right, we're gonna gonna keep going through. I'm a bit bit clunky. I said, oh, just use the D pad, mate. It makes it a bit easier. Oh yeah, that's right. Blah blah. blah. So we're going through. Dead. Gets down into the water. Dead. <laughs> okay. All right, no worries. And he's like, "All right, well, we don't, we don't need any money. I'm just going to get through the level." Dead. And I went on like this for a little while. I've got up, gone to the bathroom, walked back out. He's he's put the controller down. He's like, "That's it. I'm going home." Uh, I'm like, <laughs> "Really?" I said, "Oh, do you want my do you want my login so that you can uh, continue playing when you get home?" No, nah, piss off. I'm going to bed. I don't need. <laughs> <laughs> you did that on purpose, you asshole. Yeah, I'm an asshole, but he's, <laughs> he's, he's pretty much my brother, so I'm allowed to. <laughs> oh, um, Gre- I, ca- I can't imagine Greg being an angry kind of guy. He seems pretty cruisy, dude. He's a, he's a very cruisy dude, and uh, there, there there can be certain things. I, I don't think I've really ever seen him rage to the point, but um, yeah, Alex the Kid gets us all going. Oh yeah, so, that's what. That's why the other day, when I was at your place that time and you put it on, I didn't want to play it. Really, I'm like, no hmm. way. That game kill, killed me as I a mean, kid. Yeah. I swear at it all yeah, the time. No, Every thanks. time I turn it on, I swear at it. Uh, but yeah, other than yeah. that, um, I've played some more F1 2017. Yeah, which our review has now gone up. It is over at AussieGamersExpress dot com, and. Sure is. It's a pretty cool review, I think. I'm quite proud of that one. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, it was good. Almost yeah, so... convinced me to play it, but no. <laughs> the the game itself, mate, I I can't fault it. There's a there's a few little things. Um, as with a lot of the F1 games that I've played, the the facial features aren't quite there. Like um, they look borderline scary. Probably the best way to describe them. Yeah. But uh, other than that, mate, I can't fault. It is such an embracing experience. Uh, sitting here, I was streaming it uh, for a few nights, and each night I've had a couple of people jump in and just sit and watch me doing laps. Uh, then occasionally you'll get someone that'll that'll have a bit of a chat. And the weird thing is, it's people the people that are watching it, they're not chatting while I'm doing the laps. When I'm back in the pits or I'm in a cut scene or anything like that, that's when they'll put something up to have a chat. So they'll know that... When it's respect. racing, yeah, you're on, and that, and that's the thing I found is that when I'm when I'm on and racing, I 
I'd, turn, I'd put the mic up because you know the um, the steering wheel's rattling and you can hear the clicks of the, the gears and everything. So it's not as much fun, you know, hearing tick tick and then rattle rattle as as you're trying to watch it. So just mute the mic <clears throat> and then um, you just get stuck into it and you just sort of get into this zone where you don't really know what's going on on around you. But that's a lot of fun. Um, Uncharted: The Lost Legacy. Played a yeah. bit more of that. Um, unfortunately, Destiny came, so I haven't finished it yet. But I got all the coins. I finished all them off. Yeah. I found out what they open. Mm-hmm. I found some monkeys being absolutely filthy. <laughs> I see. I saw you live streaming that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want to want to want to listen to a grown man giggle about monkeys? Can't have a look at that. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe they've been so filthy. And Paint I've me, started, Jack, I've like one f- of your French girls. Yeah. <laughs> and so I've done a few more of the actual story missions on there as well. So nice. I, I don't think I really don't think I've got too much further to go. It's just that you know, Destiny's taken up all the other time. And the only other thing I've done is I've jumped on Siege a couple of times to do the dailies. Yep, just. Plugging away at those games now. Good on you. Hmm. All right. So that's it uh, for me, mate. Well, for me, uh, the well, obviously, the most of this week has been taken up by Destiny 2. But as I always like to, I've found time for some other games. Because on the same day that Destiny 2 came out, another cracking game came out. Why the hell would you release another game? Okay, granted, it's a completely different game. Why would you release two big kind of games on the same day? This game that I'm talking about, you know, it's, it's obviously not big as in the, the sense of Destiny big, but it's a decent game and it's a sequel too. You know what I'm talking about? I do indeed. What about you, Ross? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. I can't think of it. Ooh. I'm talking about Knack 2. Was that the full game or the beta? No, full game, no, there's no betas for NAC 2. No, NAC 2 is out. It came out on the 6th of September, the same day as Destiny 2. Why would you do such a thing? It's so going to be overshadowed. But look, granted that they are very different games, but there's going to be a lot of people out there that probably would play NAC 2 that played the first one, that it's just overshadowed because they're going to go get Destiny. And that's going to take up probably the next three months of their lives. But anyway, I played Knack 2, and the review for it is uh, up on uh, the Aussie Gamers Express YouTube channel. It's a video review there. I've got to say, after playing and enjoying Knack 1, Knack 2 is fantastic. It is a great sequel. It's a fun game. The power-ups, the co-op, the colourful Gameplay, the story's still a little bit, okay, it's a little bit sort of childish and sort of, uh, which goes along with the art style and all that. But the gameplay itself is very far from childish. If you want to play that on the hard or the hardest difficulty, you're going to have a shit time. You're going to have a struggle on your hands. The original Knack was super duper hard on the normal setting. Granted, Knack 2 is a little bit easier on normal. The difficulty still massively ramps up on hard and the hardest. So it's... it's A lot of people will say, oh, Knack, it's a kid's game. It's an action-adventure game. It's actually pretty fun. The puzzles in it are good. The gameplay is fun and inviting. The, the, the enemies are, like, tricky. And I think that might be where the name come from, because there's a knack to, to beating your enemies. I don't know who I was talking about the other day. Is that an Aussie thing, saying there's a knack to something? You think? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'd say so. Possibly. I, I use it. Yeah, I know, but I don't know if it's a universal thing. I don't know if, like, say, Americans, if we said, uh, how do you do this? Oh, yeah, it's a bit hard. There's a bit of a knack to it. Do, do Americans know what we're talking about? Uh, Rusky Big Musky, I know he listens to the show all the time. Do you know what I'm talking about? The word knack and not knack is in the game is the uh, the saying saying, can you can you open this jar for me? It's a little bit tricky. Yeah, there's a knack to opening this jar. Does that make sense to 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 people across uh, 
in other countries. I don't know. If if it is a universal thing, maybe that's why it's called that, because there is a knack to, to, to beating your enemies. It's not just wailing on them. You generally need to do something to remove their defenses or you have to watch their attack patterns and all that sort of stuff. You can't just go in and just wail on them like in, say, God of War or something like that. There's no just smash the same button. You need to change it up. Otherwise, you, you're going to get destroyed. So, Knack 2. Played through that one. We played it with my daughter as well. Because uh, the, the co-op is drop in, drop out. You can literally just connect a second tr- controller and another Knack appears, a nice blue one. And uh, if that controller has no input for about a minute, it disappears and you go back to single player. So... I've had a good good time playing that. That's not a bad game, that one. I would definitely recommend that one. And it's really cheap, too. It's only like 55 bucks. Any questions on Knack 2? You guys are probably not terribly interested in it, no? Yeah? No? Oh, I'll, I'll I'll explain what it actually is. Well, it's an action-adventure platformer. And you, are, you play as Knack, who's made up of hundreds of little relic pieces... So it, it does play on the, the visuals. It looks fantastic. You're playing as a character made up of all these particles. And you can collect more particles throughout the levels. And that'll you can absorb them, which makes Knack bigger. And then you can, by the, with the press of a button, you can drop all but a few of your relics. So you might be, say, 15 feet tall. You can drop all your relics and go down to one and a half foot tall. And that way you can go through little passageways in little secret tunnels, come out the other side, press the button again, draw your relics back up into yourself and go back full size so you can fight things. So you can change your size. It's it's remarkable. It's a, it's a really cool, decent thing to look at, like just to see. It's amazing. And yeah, and it's basically, oh, it's just a, yeah, like a action adventure platformer game with that kind of element in there where you can grow and shrink. Which is really cool. Yeah, sounds yeah. very interesting. I, I must say, I've never played the first one, and mm. I didn't really look at this one. But after you know what you said, I'm going to jump on and have a look at your review, and I might give it. A- yeah, well, I mean, it's it's something, and I think I mentioned it in the review. A, a lot of people would look at Knack and say, "Oh, that just looks like some kids' game." But if you actually try it, I think there is a demo. There might actually be a demo. Give the demo a go. You'd be surprised. It's actually a pretty cool game. Uh, yeah, that's, that's I, what I think what I, sorry, that's I was gonna say that's what I thought came out on the same day as Destiny Two was the, the demo, not the, the beta. But it was the uh, full release, was it? No, the demo came out a few days before. I think ah, about, okay. about a week before Destiny actually released, and then on right. the sixth, the same day as Destiny, the full game released. Okay, yeah. so I, I just had the dates around. No, all good. Up. But yeah, give give the demo a go and and see what you think. It's uh, yeah, not a bad game. The only the only downfall is there's the, cut, the what are they called? Quick time events, QTEs. Mm-hmm. Nobody likes QTEs, do they? Not in this day and age, I don't think. Anyway, no, nah, I don't know why they keep putting them in. Oh, just they're not horrible. There's not heaps of them, but they're not fun either. Because there's an awesome sort of action sequence usually plays out during QTEs, right? But you're too busy focusing on what to press next that you don't even really notice what's going on in this mad action sequence. That's why I don't like them. That's me anyway. I don't know. Maybe I've got a bad ability to concentrate on more than one thing at once, but that's 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 probably the one thing I have to say that's not, not too crash hot about it, but there's not too many of them. But anyway, I'll move on from Knack 2. And I mentioned another game I played this week is called Cosmic Kites. Now, I don't expect anyone to actually have heard of that one because it's a uh, it's an indie title from Steam. But I did a review of that one as well. The uh, the reviews up on uh, the Aussie Games Express YouTube channel. Cosmic Kites. It's like Snake. Dare say you guys have played Snake before on your old Nokia's. Once or twice, yeah. Many many hours sitting in class. Absolutely. I've murdered so many battery charges literally just playing Snake while I was taking a poo. So Cosmic Kites is out available. It's available now on Steam. And it's kind of like the spiritual successor to the Snake games. 
you're not on like a grid. You're sort of free to roam around, kind of like uh, oh, what's that game called? Geometry Wars. It's kind of like that. And it's got all those pixel effects, bright, high contrast colors, and all that. But you move around with freedom just using three buttons. So it's just left, right, and a warp button where you can sort of transport, uh, teleport, I should say, ahead of yourself. And it, and that's all it is, really. There's, uh, there's about eight game modes. It's uh, local co-op, single player, move around the map, picking up power-ups, which you can fire at your enemies. And you, you've got to avoid your own tail because you'll grow longer like in Snake. Don't run into your own tail. Don't run into an enemy's tail. Try and get them to run into your tail or shoot them with your power-ups. It's one of those games where it's you know, easy enough to play, but super hard to master, like Snake was back in the day. And I still remember 1,850 was my top Snake score. I think that's good. I could never top that after I did it. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, but yeah, that Sounds was... pretty decent. Yeah, look, I mean, it's it's a good game. It's not something that everyone's going to rush out and buy. But it, it is a game that I would recommend if you've got a couple of mates over. It's four-player, local co-op. If you've got a couple of mates over and you're looking for something to play, that's, that's somewhere you should look because it's a cool sort of party game. Uh, and because it only uses three buttons, it's very easy to play four players on, like, you know, if you've got a controller or two controllers or... You know, you might have two people on a keyboard with two controllers, or you might have one person on a controller and three on the keyboard. It's easy to do because it's only three three keys that are needed. So it's uh, it's uh, pretty neat there. But that's Cosmic Kites, and it's available on Steam now. Check that out if you're uh, interested in that. And I think that pretty much closes in on all the games that I'm allowed to talk about. There's two other games that I've been playing this week, but both of them are under embargo to next week's show. So we won't be able to talk about them until then. And a quick mention before we finish up video game discussion. EB Games Expo is like two weeks away. Cannot wait. Yes, what? It's three weeks, isn't it? Queensland's correct. Hang on, let me look at my Better be three weeks because in three weeks I'm on holiday. And that's when I'm going to Queensland. One week, two weeks. Yeah, three weeks. My bad. (laughs) 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 I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Three weeks away. Pretty much... Well, yes, three weeks tomorrow from when we're recording. That's when we're jumping in the car and heading on up. I know. So, a bit of a car trip, road tripping with my two favourite allies. That'll be mm. you and Reprimere. But, uh, Ross, uh, I don't know. You you're, you got any interest in the EB Expo this year? I, I do. Um, unfortunately, I can't make it this year. Um. I was intending to try and go, but other things have come up around the same time. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to see what, what they have there, what's available and, and everything else, of course, as always. Well, I'm so, sure there'll be uh, plenty of times when we've got our buff heads on the, in front of the camera. Oh, absolutely. And, and showing off over Facebook. So we'll, no, we'll yeah, send, yeah, be there in spirit, spirit. We'll send plenty of coverage your way. We'll do uh, – look, I'm, I'm keen on some silly live streams on the, the drive there. Hmm. I think there'll be a few of them. Yeah, there'll be a few of them for sure. I just hope that one day maybe it comes close on me having to travel quite so far. Well, yeah, you're you're an Adelaidean, right? Um, well, technically, somewhere no. that way, South Australia, yeah. I'll say. Yeah, I'm I'm three hours from Adelaide, virtually. Okay. Yeah. In Port Pirie. There you go. Yeah. So there's no expos in in uh, in South Australia to date, no, but we- maybe. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. We hope. Maybe. Probably not, man. There's, there's a good reason that Adelaide doesn't get much. <laughs> What's that, Snoogs? There's nothing to fucking do. <laughs> Fair call. I've, I've been to Adelaide many times, and yeah, there's not much there. I've, last I was there was a few ago for Clipsal, and even then, on the the biggest you know weekend that the town reckons they have. Well, the city, I should say it, but it kind of feels like a town compared to Sydney. <laughs> well, yeah, I went there for the it's, it's, Oh, sorry, you keep going. No, I was just saying it's beautiful, but especially when you go, and it was like I think ten o'clock at night, and we're going to have you know we've just finished drinking at, at Clipsal and coming across, and 
you know, it was that hot because it's a you know beginning of the year, middle of summer. Yep. You're not drunk. You just you've you've had a big day, and it's sort of ten o'clock at night. You're like, oh, let's get into the beer. Oh no, sorry guys, we're closing up soon. Well, mm. Of course. Well, yeah, I, I went to to um, to Adelaide for the Clipsal Five Hundred, and uh, that's mm. apparently the city of churches. Is that right? Is that what they call it? That's yeah, yeah, that's what they that's call correct. it. The fucking city of coffee shops, if you ask me. So you say the city of mammals? Mammals? Yeah, you haven't heard that term? No. Middle aged men in lycra. <laughs> oh God! All right, if you say Thank so. Thank God I didn't say that. No. <laughs> I said there's so there's so many of them around Adelaide. It's ridiculous. Yeah, as long as I stay. That's right. Let's 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 build a wall. <laughs> oh dear. All right. Well, that's it for video game discussion. Let's move on to video game news. All right, first up in this week's news, PewDiePie's racial slur. Let me give you a little bit of background into to this one here. In February, Felix Kjellberg, I think is how you say his name, a.k.a. PewDiePie, was dropped from both Disney as well as Google for creating anti-Semitic content, including a video where Kjellberg watches two men hold up a sign that says, Death to all Jews. Now, Kelberg is stirring up con- controversy again with a live stream of him playing Player Unknown's Battlegrounds or PUBG, saying the racial slur, the N word, during the, an intense moment of gameplay. I've got the audio handy if you haven't heard it yet. Let's play this one. What? What the fuck is happening? What the hell was that? The potato was fucking insane. I was holding it so fucking straight. What a fucking nigger. Jeez, oh my god. What the fuck? Sorry, but what the fuck? What a fucking asshole. I don't mean that in a bad way. Jesus <laughs> fuck. Why would he do that? Legit, why would he do that? All right, well, he says he didn't mean that in a bad way. Now, at first, I'm going to clarify something here. At first, I was a little bit confused as to why. I don't know what he was getting angry about. Like, he was shooting at a guy, and he couldn't down him. So I'm like, well, why are you angry at him? Because you suck. But I realized, I think he was getting angry because he was trying to stop the guy from killing his downed mate. And he shot him like four times or what have you, and he eventually killed his downed friend, which is then when he uttered the slur. But uh, further to that, Campo Santo, who are the creators of Firewatch, have responded by filing for takedowns on all of PewDiePie's Firewatch content. On YouTube, mm-hmm. so they don't want him making money off their stuff anymore. Essentially, is what they're saying, and uh, they don't want anything to do with somebody that presents themselves like this. Opinions? I say good on them. I say I, th- I think more people should jump on board with it because let's let's be honest. Okay, the 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 phrase or the or the word in itself, you know, it's. At the end of the day, it's just a word. Yeah. You know, but when has, I, I know myself personally, I, I swear with the best of them, I've got an absolutely filthy mouth, but it doesn't matter who I am raging at or, or anything like that or in what level of that, that it's been at, has that term ever come out of my mouth? Not not in a der- not not in a derogatory way, you know. No. I've, I've got I've got friends that are African American that, um, you know, we've we've had a joke, and you know, I I don't deny I have said it many times because I do have those friends, and it was a was a comical thing at the time, but he has used it in a derogatory way. And I don't give a shit if you mean it or not. It has come out of his mouth in a moment of heat. So therefore, as as soon as your emotions get high, 
your your logic drops, and that's when you say things you don't really, you you don't understand, but it's already in your vocab, so that's when it comes out. Yeah. So it's right. already in his vocabulary. It's already in his mindset. You know, as much as I'm against this whole bullshit PC movement and the bleeding hearts of the world and all this sort of crap, I'm 100% against that. But if people, if if he wants to go and do this on screen in front of, you know, he's got all these people the world over that range from, you know, kids to adults that are watching him, then I think a few more people need to take a hard line because, and like you said, it's not the first time. No. It's, you know, he's had this anti-Semitic stuff before, which, you know, as soon as people chuck a backlash over it, oh, I'm so sorry, oh, please forgive me. No, mate, you're a fuckwit. A a little bit of a background to that anti-Semitic thing that he did with uh, the sign was death to all Jews. That That was his idea of showing... Or testing how have have you heard of Fiverr before? Fiverr dot com? No. Fiverr dot com is basically a website that you can go to and you can employ people to do things for you. And the Fiverr is 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 everything starts from as low as five bucks. So you can get somebody to do something for as simp- for as low as a fiver. So let's say, for example, and I've used it. I've used it before for this podcast. We had an intro uh, and an outro made for the podcast on Fiverr. Oh, and cool. so you can say, like, people, I, I might go across to Fiverr and say, look, okay, I do a YouTube channel. I, I need an intro made for one of my videos. And you you send details to people, and it'll be five bucks for a simple video, ten bucks for a video with audio with a like music, fifteen bucks with a like a voiceover, and so on. And and you can do that for anything, you know. It could be whatever. I'm making a game. I need art. Anything, yeah. anything. That thing there with the death to all Jews was was PewDiePie testing how far he could get somebody to go on Fiverr. So he paid somebody. To make a sign and hold up a sign saying death to all Jews. He was making a point, but it was a fucking stupid point that didn't really need but to be made. That's the thing. It doesn't It doesn't need to be made. Yeah. And someone in his position when he has, you know, you, you've got to have a, a little bit of respect for the people that are following you yeah. who are all walks of life, who are, you know, range across different generations of people so just pull your head in really Mm. what do you think ross um yeah i i think everything he'd done was was very wrong i mean as you say he's been in trouble before um and i think he's one of those sorts of people uh, that you can sort of see in this day and age that doesn't always think about what he's doing and saying he just goes ahead and does some things regardless of what the consequences are going to be, which is very wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. That's, now, look, that's my, all well and good. It's, there, there's certain things you stay away from. Well, oh, look, exactly, look, exactly. See, the problem is now there's if, if you pick your audience as snooks, there are some certain things that I would say to you in a private conversation that I would never say on the podcast. Yeah, but because, that's, that's exactly right. But that's, that's because, of, because you've... You've got a brain, and it's, it's yeah, it's, and we can have uh, a laugh at all. Private. Pick my audience, something that I know you'll find humorous hmm. and won't be offended by, but other people might. But it, it doesn't hurt anyone if it stays between the two of us, right? See, the problem exactly. is if you do, but the thing is, you and I don't speak to each other. We don't use that word. That's a pretty bad word. Like well, I'm, I stay away from it. So it's it very doesn't because we're Australian too. Yeah, it's not really that pronounced. It's, it's over not really there, a big thing here. Yeah, but the thing is, you've got to try and this is something that I think of anyway. That in general conversation with my friends, if I use certain terminology, when I am in the public eye, those things might slip out. So I try to limit the things that I do say that are super controversial when I am in private conversations, because I do have a public presence, it's not as massive as, as PewDie's, obviously, but there is a bit of a presence there. So I do watch my tongue. So podcast, not, not such a big, big deal because it's not live. 
But when I do do live streams, I do keep that in mind that we are live streaming. There are people for all, from all different walks of life, life, and you do need to sort of toe a line a little bit there. Because there's no admission fee, like there's no 18 plus thing. Anybody can generally get onto these streams and watch. And it's, I think that's going a little bit too far saying that stuff. Like, I mean, that's stuff that I've heard many, many times from people that I'm playing with. And there's, there's no issue because nobody takes offense to it. But if you keep yeah, speaking not, like not that, world stage. that's exactly right. Now that vi- he, there's a video that he's put up apologizing for it. I've got the audio for that in a minute. Um, yeah. that video itself has, has had 5 million views. Hmm. Uh, oh, no, no one denies that he is a presence, but you know, actually, you know, you know what, we, I'm going to do a bit of a public service here. Okay. So th- this, this will be shout out. We'll, we'll, we'll shout this out to, to Felix. Can I call him? Felix? I'm going to call him Felix. You can anyway, call him whatever you like, apparently. Mate, <laughs> shoot us an email. Info at AussieGamersExpress.com. And I'll tell you what we can do for you, mate. <laughs> we will give you a plethora of words that you can use or phrases or anything like this that you can use to take the piss out of someone online. And they're not going to be overly derogatory. They're going to be good Aussie humor. You know, some of them are going to be absolutely filthy but 90% of the world won't understand it because it's coming from someone in Australia anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> we've got that many different ways to say things, that many different words, that many different terms that we all use that no no one else understands. I'm, I'm pretty sure we can help him out. I'm hoping you've got a list to share right now. No, I'm not getting into that because there'll be too many beeps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Did you want to hear the apology or you don't give a shit? Personally, I don't give a shit. <laughs> what about you, Ross? Do you want to hear it? No, I don't care. He's, he's done the wrong thing. Who cares? All right. Well, he's apologised. He's apologised for it. Again. Fantastic. You know, he's he's realised he's done something wrong, but you just don't. I, 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 don't, I don't like his stuff. It's just like his personality grates on me. It just, I, I don't find a common ground. Oh, you know? I can't stand. I can't stand him either. He's, he's... <clears throat> and it's just that when when you see something like this come across, to me personally, what he said, I, it's it's got no meaning to me at all. Mm. But the the fact and yeah, it's we we just know it's it's just it's it's, it's a no go. Any anyone that puts their their voice online or yeah, you know, maybe it's just because we're that little bit old. We. You know, if we did something wrong, we'd we'd get backhanded by my dad. But yeah. I, I, I just don't understand it. I think it's, well, it's too little, too late, and he's been in trouble. Yeah, so. he, he's done some big stuff ups, but I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't. I think he's too big to make a big dent in his anything really. Like I said, that video, the apology video, has got five million views on it. He's probably made more from that bloody video than he did from the live stream. So, anyway. Mm. All right, we'll move on from that one there and move on to the next piece of news, Resident Evil in 8-bit. Now, I saw this uh, little news item earlier this week and I thought, what is this about? This sounds really cool. But the website is pscd.ru and they've released a demo of Resident Evil 16-bit for the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis. There's no storyline details as yet, but there's uh, some screenshots and a playable demo. And it appears that you play as Claire Redfield uh, in the game. And the demo is really short, but it does show several key concepts of gameplay, such as 16-bit rendering of the iconic Resident Evil inventory inventory screen, screen. Can't speak. And a third person isometric view. Uh, the level shown seems to take place in a zombie invested, infested hotel uh, with long corridors, grand staircases, large lobby, and a bloody scrawling of the word red rum on one of the walls. Hmm. Red rum. Why are people developing games for the Mega Drive? <laughs> 
for the mini to come out. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so, look, I downloaded it. The, the, the links to the website where you can download it yourself is in the podcast description. So if you want to check it out, go ahead. I took the time to play it myself. It's fairly broken. There's not a lot to it as yet. There's no walking animation. You sort of just slide across the ground. I couldn't work out how to shoot. I, I equipped my gun. I couldn't work out how to shoot. I went up to a zombie and it just disappeared. Uh, I think the demo is really there just to show that they're working on it because it's uh, it's very much a work in progress. But uh, oh, there's a link in the description as well about getting a Genesis or a Mega Drive emulator because it doesn't run on a PC. You need a, a Mega Drive emulator for that. But I'm I'm a little bit intrigued. It actually like once once it works properly, that could be a pretty cool game. Would you play an eight, Would you play a 16-bit Resident Evil? No, you wouldn't play a normal Resident Evil, would you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've just... I, I played 16-bit when it was new. Yeah. <laughs> as, as terrible as that sounds, it's just... Yeah, I'm, I'm over it. I know there was a big um, resurgence of it a little while ago, or pixel art or whatever you want to call it. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of over them. No, no good. No, not for me. How about you, what about Ross? you, Ross? Do you like this kind of stuff? Um, not really. Not not in this day and age. I mean, I might jump in and give it a try, but it wouldn't be something I'd play regularly or consistently kind of thing. Oh, okay. Well, I would. I thought it was weird that they're developing it for the Mega Drive, though. I understand if they were developing it 16-bit constraints, but for a PC or console. Xbox and PlayStation, but why are they develop like it's actually in like coded for a Mega Drive? Weird, mm. very weird. But anyway, that's happening. Go and check it out. Details in the description. Next bit of news: LA Noir remastered coming. We saw it. We took the rumors and we ran with it, and it's correct. We uh, had the announcement of the uh, the new versions of the blockbuster detective thriller. L.A. Noir, and it's scheduled to release on the 14th of November 2017 for the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. And alongside these three new console versions, they're also taking steps to release a virtual reality version of L.A. Noir, which is called the VR Case Files, and it's featuring seven select cases from the original game rebuilt specifically for a virtual reality experience on the HTC Vive. Vive. Why not PlayStation VR? That's a very good question. <sighs> I, I would too, definitely too play... Sorry? Oh, there's there's just too many things that are being... That, that are perfect. Perfect for PlayStation VR. Yeah, just missed, missed opportunities. Like, they could have made this VR version of it come out with the PlayStation 4 version if you bought it. Because I'm definitely going to get it. Because I never finished L.A. Noir. I had a lot going on in my life back when L.A. Noir came out. I enjoyed it, but it just it just got washed out in what I was doing at the time, and I never came back to it. It's probably on the top of my to-do list to play, but now being last gen and all that, having to play it on another console, just it's not going to happen. So I'm pretty happy for this kind of remaster. We've had heaps of remastered uh, games. Are you happy for this one to be remastered? Happy for you, mate. <laughs> You're not interested. Um, no, no, no. It's it's one of those things that um, I think it's a game that probably deserves a remaster. Mm. And I've I've only played a very small amount of it. I just I just didn't get into it. Um, but it uh, it does come across, and from what I remember, it's a it's a game that actually you know deserves another go because you've got another audience out there to play it. Mm. And as we've spoken about on the on the podcast before. It could just be a leg up to get the studio a little bit more money for number two. For LA Noir 2, that's it, yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Did if you that play works, it, Ross? Um, go for it. Would I play it? Did you play the? Did you play it when it first came out? No, I didn't, no. What about this time round? It's, it's not the type of game for me in my... So... Do, do you know I what kind play. of game it is? Because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit weird. 
it, I, I never really looked into it a lot because I did have a friend who played it, but I, because of what he told me about it at the time, I sort of made the assumption that it's not for me. So no, I don't know what it is entirely, um, which, which in saying that means that maybe I would pick it up this time and just have a look. It mm. would all depend on price. Price, of course, though, because I'm not going to, for a remaster, I wouldn't pay a full price for I don't think you should ever. Um, to to describe L.A. Noir, I would call it kind of like think. Well, it's a rock star game, so think mm-hmm. open world, think Grand Theft Auto mixed with yep. Mafia. Yep. And there's a heavy emphasis on investigation and interrogation. Yes. It was something I never really got the hang of and couldn't really do it right. I'm hoping I can sort of get it right this time around in the, in the remaster, but you'll interview somebody or you'll sit down and you'll talk to somebody and they've used a really unique face capture, right? So it's it's the best facial capture that I've ever seen in any game. And I guess the reason why they haven't done it since is because it's very, very in-depth and I'm sure it would take a lot of time to, to put into a game. But you can see so much detail in somebody's face that the game actually wants you to pick up on facial cues, so body language, so to try and tell whether or not the person you're speaking to is lying to you or telling the truth. And then you make up your own mind, and then when the the dialogue options come up, you can either accuse them of lying or you can take what they're saying and believe it. But if you accuse them of lying and they're not lying, it can basically destroy the interview and they're not going to talk to you anymore and it makes makes your game a little bit harder. So it was that, that kind of aspect to it. That was just, that was a, I guess, a major but minor part of the game. It was majority, majority of it was a open world shooter, kind of like uh, Mafia and, uh, and GTA. GTA, yep. Hmm. But yeah, I recommend taking a look at it. That's another game that would benefit from a demo, I think. They should release a quick little demo before they uh, release the full game. Yes. Mm. And hopefully the VR part comes to PlayStation VR one day. That would be nice. Oh, Thank you. Fingers are crossed. All right, well, that's it for this week's news. So let's move on to some user-created content. <laughs> Alright, so first up in the user-created content, as usual, I'll run through a list of likes. Thank you very much to all these people that clicked like. It helps us out uh, immensely. First up, there was UK Dazarus via Twitter. He's uh, jumped onto our Twitter version of the post and uh, and liked that one. So thank you very much. Then there was the Doug crew. Thank you very much for those guys. They are a bunch of legends doing their Xbox and Chill podcast. Then there was Eloisa A. Mason, Aladdin Hun. Virtual Earth Online, Chauncey Gonzalez, and Adam Ryle. So thank you to all those guys for clicking the like button. It's so easy to do, but we really do appreciate it. So that was cool. And now we'll go through the comments section and uh, the suggestions of things to talk about. Adam Ryle's first up, and he says, I have a PUBG addiction and I can't shake it. Ramble away. <laughs> right. Uh, Snoogs, you've not played PUBG, have you? No, I cannot wait to get my hands on on the box. Okay. Uh, Ross, have you played PUBG? I have played it once on my brother's PC. What do you think? I like it. I am looking forward to it on the, on the Xbox as well. I really okay. am. All right. I have PUBG, and I've played it numerous times. I like it. I think it's a great game. I know why people like it. I can't, for the life of me, understand why people are so t- like ridiculously infatuated with it. Though, I think I think that's me just being a little bit too picky because it is like a an indie title game. Things like when you get into a car, the animations aren't right. Uh, what else? Well, it is still in early access. Yeah, I know, but these <laughs> these are the sort of things that. I don't think will change regardless of early access. I don't think they're they're concentrating on this and fixing it. Jumping, fall damage is shit. You don't like you get so much damage just from falling small distances. Uh, it's it's glitchy. It's buggy. It's just 
it's actually it's actually quite a mess of a game. The core gameplay of it is really good. It is fantastic. And if Microsoft getting on board to bring this across onto the Xbox One can polish this thing, I think it'll go really well. I've seen some gameplay of it on the Xbox, and it looks great. And I'm looking forward to it on the Xbox, because I think another reason why I can't get into it as well, keyboard and mouse. Yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah. Because no, you're a lefty, it, it sort of puts a bit of a rubber on it. But... Um, yeah. I think the big thing is, and just the way that it's captured everyone is, it's it's a hundred people getting in there, and mm, yeah, you know the the people that are the big that that seem to to be getting the most out of it, you know the the big streamers of it and whatnot, they're never playing by themselves. They've always got a crew. They're, there's always you know the the and so. It's, um, yeah, considering that it needs to get a, a te- like a, a game together of a hundred people, you're not waiting real long. Mm. It's a pretty but, popular. Uh, I think I think that's the the big thing. It's it's that that social side of it that's uh, got everyone that you know the staging area where you can pretty much run around and talk to anybody. Yeah, know, and and what just I, I think that side of it's brilliant, and that's that's the part that I can't wait to try out. I can't you wait know, to looks... try out controller support on a console. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm. But yeah, it's 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 a little bit beyond me. But like I said, I can't get into it because of the controls not working real good for me because I don't like keyboard and mouse. But Adam Royal, I don't blame you. It seems to be a fantastic game. If it's if it's right up your alley with that kind of control scheme, yeah. Play away, my friend. Get into it. All right, uh, Chauncey, Mister Gonzalez. Xbox Rising with the Xbox One X or Nintendo Switch Xenoverse 2 900p docked or the Nintendo Direct this Thursday. Please shout me out. Cha- Chauncey? Chauncey? I think that's how you say it. Chauncey say Gonzalez? It. Yeah. Hey, man. Thank you very much for your uh, your comment on here. Now, Xbox Rising with the Xbox One. Do you think it's enough? Xbox Rising. Uh, no. Mm, too little, too the, late. The I big think. Thing. Too much, well, too well, late. No, nah, it's it's not even that. It's just it's not the right thing. Oh, what do you mean? You know, the, well, if if you have a look at the like, let's let's look back at the last generation. So we've all come to the agreement that um, you know, Xbox three hundred and sixty had the last generation, but Mm-hmm. Towards the end of it, if you have a look just at the figures, PlayStation really started to ramp up, mm. and they started to ramp up because at the end of their of the the PS3 life cycle, they started dropping exclusives, mm. and those exclusives that they started dropping, they then carried over to the PS4, and that's what has given the PS4 such a big lead is because they've got those games that are designed solely for the PS4. You can push so much more out of the console when you're designing for one console only. And we've seen it with the the, um, the Uncharted series or uh, really anything from Naughty Dog that, that's come out on the PS4. It has all been absolutely immaculate. The the stuff on the Xbox that's only for the Xbox, like uh, Gears of War 4 or Halo, they both look absolutely phenomenal because they're only for the Xbox. And I just think there's... There's not enough there. There's there's not enough. The the One X is fantastic, but it has nothing to back it up, and that's what I hope they change. The Xbox mm-hmm. One X is going to be a hit with Xbox players, and I think that'll be just about it. You get one, Ross. Xbox One X? No, mm. I won't be. Yeah, it's just. I would but I would love me, one. Sorry, go on. Oh, I was just going to say I would love one. I probably will get one eventually, but it's not high on my list. That's for sure. Yeah, I, look, I, I would love one, but for me, it's not a new console. It's still an Xbox One. Yeah. You know, um, yes, yes, it ha- has going to have improvements made to it, but it's not like having a Xbox Two, say. You know, it's not like going from an Xbox 360 to an Xbox One. It doesn't have that same situation. So for me, it's not a, a true jump, and I'm not interested at this stage. Yep, don't blame you. Yeah, look, I mean, 
there's a lot of Xbox people that are up, like, that are excited as all hell. Uh, and look, power to them. Good on you. You're going to get a console that's going to play your games really well, which is... And I'm not being a smart ass in saying that, but it's probably about time you did, because the Xbox One X, it's under. It, sorry, the Xbox One, it's it's underpowered, it's pretty piss poor, but um, it's still good enough though. But uh, you're going to get a more powerful console. You're going to pay for it, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. But I'm not uh, holding my best breath for it. Uh, other part of uh, Chauncey's comment here: Nintendo Switch. I guess he's talking about uh, Xenoverse Two. Xenoverse Two, which, which is would, Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, yeah, uh, nine hundred p oh. docked. So I'd imagine he's talking about when you plug your Switch into the dock and play it on your TV, you're only getting nine hundred p instead of ten eighty. Ah, oh, mate, it's a Nintendo console. I don't really expect anything better. It's also a mobile console. Yeah, nine hundred p look all right in a small screen. Yeah, it would, absolutely. I mean, Xbox One's been doing 900p for the last three years. Can't really complain too much if you're a Nintendo Switch is <laughs> punching that out. And look at the size of the thing compared to the Xbox. So, yeah. mate, mm-hmm. look, Very true. it's you not 1080. Off, yeah, it's not 1080. It's not It's not uh, 4K, but it's Nintendo. That's not why we play Nintendo games. We don't play Nintendo games for the latest and greatest in graphics and fidelity. We play it because their games are and- fun. You know what? Xenoverse doesn't need it. Xenoverse, no. the, the art style in that is, um, well, it's cartoony, but it's it's got it's sort of very sharp edged. It's very forgiving. Sense. Yeah, very forgiving and, yeah, for that kind of it's thing. It's pretty. It's pretty forgiving. It's forgiving, I should say. It's um, I think it'll still look pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, as for the Nintendo Direct that's coming tomorrow, uh, as as uh, being Thursday tomorrow, uh, I don't. I don't really have. I'm not really interested, really. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, and if anything amazing comes out, I'll post on it and 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 uh, and all that sort of stuff. But I, I don't know if anything amazing's coming. They want to tell us more about Super Mario Odyssey. That'd be great, but I don't know. We'll see. Only time will tell. All right. Uh, next one is from Virtual Earth Online. These are some guys that reached out to us a little while ago, gave their game a try, but uh, they're building an amazing maze in their game, which is called Virtual Earth Online, which is kind of like an upgraded version of Minecraft. They're looking for community members to help them build this amazing maze, and uh, they'd like you to come along. It's free. Go and uh, go and check out Virtual Earth Online, and uh, you can either teleport to Vakayada, no, Vakayaka, I don't know, whatever this place yaka, is. Yaka Yaka. Oh, is that yaka, a Y? Yaka. Yep, yep, it's a Y. It's, it's, see, I've got, I've got uh, Microsoft Word opened, and it's underlined, because Word doesn't know what it is, and the red line was hiding the, the little bottom bit on the Y. There we go, Yaka let me, Yaka. Let, let me just put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, well, it's underlined. The underline it's, was ruined. It's Yaka Yaka. Yes, it's Yaka Yaka. Help them or just say hi. Move on now. Bloody stupid word. <laughs> Eloisa A. Mason says, What game have you played over and over and over and over and over again to get all the trophies? Do you think I really need to answer this? Nope. Mm. Ross, what have you played over and over and over and over again to get all the trophies? Uh, many of the Halo games. Oh, yeah? yeah How many my... trophies do you get in, in Halo? Um, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm no, I'm being, remember. I'm being facetious. They're, they're achievements, <laughs> not trophies. Yeah, well, that's that's true. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, my my friends very much into Halo with the achievements, and I just come along for the ride most times. But you know, we always grind through and through every little thing. So you've hundred percented um, a couple of the the uh, Halo games. Um, I never finished the first one. I, Hundred percent of two, and Halo Reach, I think it was. Reach. Yep. Yeah. Um, didn't hundred percent Master Chief Collection. Did. Um, what's the latest one? Five. Five. That's the one. Mm-hmm. Um, you did. Oh, sorry, so you did or you didn't? I haven't. No. No. Oh, okay. That's on the list. On the list to go back and do though, because. 
there's still a few little things that we want to do. But there's lots of other games to play. It's the problem, you know? Yeah, that is that is a problem these days. So many awesome games. Uh, Snooks, what about you? What have you played over and over? Um, For me, it's well, probably The Division, really. Yep. Um, I've platinumed it. I have all the underground trophies. I've only got one more trophy in survival. Um, and then Last Stand come out and just didn't interest me, so I stopped chasing the trophies for that one because I wanted to keep it at 100%, but meh. <laughs> I've gotten over it now. I've got, I've, I've, uh, I've done all the, the underground. The only one I've got left for the survival is the extract 100 pieces, which is really just a grind. And yeah. Because it's not really well populated now, just trying to get a survival game just takes too long. Yep. Uh, Fair enough. But yeah, yeah, that's probably that's probably the biggest one. Other than that, of um, a few of the Artifacts Monday games that we spoke about, uh, I think two weeks ago on on the podcast, the um, point uh, and click hidden puzzle games. Yeah, I can't remember what they called. Um, or two of them that come to mind is the Mister Raven. Ghosts of Maple Creek. Yes, and they're rel- they're relatively easy platinums, but they do do require a couple of playthroughs. So, fair enough but, uh, for me. Yeah, it's easy for me. Uh, the Last of Us. I'm still working on all of the trophies. I don't have them all yet. That bloody grounded trophy. Oh, You'll one get day, there. I will get there one day. All right, uh, Denise Ryle has popped on here, and I have a sneaking suspicion this must be uh, Adam Ryle's wife. And he says, Adam Ryle deserves a birthday shout-out. So, I think it's only fitting that Ross Mark sings happy birthday to Adam Ryle. (laughs) You you don't want to hear me sing. You you entered the spotlight's on you, my friend. Come on, let's go. No, no, no. If you make make me sing, everybody's eardrums will bleed. (laughs) That's how bad it is. Oh, all right. Maybe I'll just superimpose some happy birthday music in the background while we're talking. Well, a big, a big happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday, Adam. I, I, I bet birthday, you're Adam. 18 years old or something like that. Good on you. Welcome. Uh, happy 21. level up day. That's right. Spend your, uh, your, your upgrade point wisely. All right, uh, next one is here was the last effort there from Paul David Clennon. I know he likes to get in there with uh, user-created content. Uh, he was a little bit worried that he missed out this week. He says, don't know if I'm too late. Keep for next week if I am. But you're not too late. You are. You were just in time. I saw it tonight. And uh, here is his submission. After playing around with the PlayStation VR at work, it made me wonder what games... Uh, sorry, makes me wonder what games demand a VR port or a VR new experience. I've come up with a few that might work. Makes me think, where's this bloke work if he's playing with a PlayStation VR at work? I don't hmm. know, but I'd like to join him. That's what I'm thinking. Hmm. Any got any positions going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first one on his list is Wipeout. You would need oh, a sick bag. God, oh. you, you near on need a sick bag on a sixty-five inch telly, let alone bloody VR. That's it. Oh, yeah, but it's worth wipe, it. Wipeout would be pretty cool. Second one here cool. is an interesting one that he's listed. He said Trackmania, spew-inducing. I'd say. I think Trackmania actually has one. Trackmania does have PlayStation VR support. So, yeah. and, is it available in Australia yet, though? Uh, yeah, not? I think it's a free yeah. demo. It's like a free VR thing. No, like, the, there's there's a, apparently a full game in the US, not just the de- not, not just a demo thing. Oh, well, that I don't know of. But interesting, mm. you say that. I actually bought Trackmania while it was on special last week for eleven dollars. Bargain. But I haven't played it yet because Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought it. I also bought. Uh, Duke Nukem 3D, that like remastered one. Oh well, <laughs> yeah, I bought that as well. Awesome. So haven't uh, haven't played it yet, but we'll see. Next one, Portal. I can see that working. Oh, you are a me- you are a genius. If they made Portal, Portal, be great. Portal VR would be on the top of my list. Now that you've mentioned it, mm-hmm. absolutely, I would definitely play a VR version of that. That was sick. Imagine sticking your head through the portal and having a look on the other side. 
<laughs> he put a portal on both sides of the room. Look at yourself. Look. Oh, oh, there'd be a lot of implications there. <laughs> well, could you could you imagine if you, when you when you actually do it and you get stuck in that that portal loop because you put the two of them to get too close together? Hmm. Could you imagine <laughs> that in VR? You. You'd near on send yourself insane. It'd be yeah. fantastic. <laughs> nice. Uh, next one is Tetris could be real addictive. Uh, I don't. I don't know Tetris. I'm not, not sure how. I'm not sure how it'll work. That'd be very it'd interesting. Just, it'd just be the VR would just be the camera to watch you just move your head, see where you're going. I guess. Yeah, but are you imagine moving if your they head did it to move the pieces or? Imagine I if they not. did it from 3D and you were standing on the statue. Oh. What was that? Imagine if it was it, the, the Tetris blocks were 3D and you were yeah. on the ground with them coming to you. Oh. Ooh, yeah, you can move out of the way so you didn't get squished or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> last one he says here, what about space invaders looking up and dodging missiles? Would be a hoot. That sounds mm. cool. Looking up, give you a sore neck after a while, but yeah. You probably would get a sore neck, yeah. Oh, dear. I guess that's probably the reason why some of these don't, games don't exist. Cause they're, while they're good in in theory, I don't know about practice, but man, that Portal one, bring that shit on. Absolutely. Well, what were you the, saying the earlier? Vertigo. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying earlier in the show that uh, you were talking about we should have a VR? Oh, the LA uh, the LA Noir thing, yeah. LA Noir, that's it, yeah. Yep. That would be good, that's for sure. Yeah, I think so, yeah. That was really cool because you look around and looking for evidence and all that sort of stuff. That probably will be a good VR thing. Hopefully it comes to PlayStation VR. Mm, mm. All right, that's the end what of... If... Oh, what? No, well, I was just actually thinking, well, what about if if you had The Last of Us from Joel's point of view? Nah, for like a no. first-person game? Hmm. No, I don't think it'll work. No, no. No. I'd play it. I'd probably platinum it too. <laughs> You'd give it a crack. Yeah, I'd give it a crack. Give it a red hot go. I don't know. I don't know how it would work though. All right, that's it for uh, for user created content. Let's move into what's that sound? All right, Ross. Did you hear last week's what's that sound in its entirety? I certainly did. Do you have any idea what it is? I have got no clue. Yeah, me neither. I'm going to play it now. Let's have a listen. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Okay, that must have been it. (laughs) I'm still having issues with this this player, so we're going to have to try something else. But anyway, that was it. Do you you want the answer? Was it was it Crash? Crash. Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot. No, it's not Crash Bandicoot. It's actually from Fallout 4. What? Fallout yeah. 4? Yeah. Well, this is what Reprimir tells me. I'm taking his word for it because i got no idea. It's the idiot savant ability activating in Fallout 4. Oh, God. I don't know what that ability does. I never picked it, obviously, because I've not heard that no. before. Yeah, yeah. That's, no. that's new to me. Yeah, I don't know. That's what it was. But well done, Rep. You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, look. If I can get this uh, other the, this week's what's that sound to uh, to load up, I'll play that one. Stand by. Okay. That. Well, that one was titled Extra Hard from Reprimand. No, that's... Oh, shit. Um, 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 uh, they gave it away for free when the PlayStation 3 got hacked. Oh. Top-down twin-stick shooter. 
did something. Oh, dead. You're not talking about Dead Nation. Uh, possibly. Dead Nation was a plus title with the PS4. No, no, no. There's there's also one on the PS3 that sounds more like it. Bros, do you have any idea? I feel like I've heard it, but I can't. I can't yeah, name me, it. Me too. You know what I'm thinking? It is. There's, there's two games I've got in mind. Uh, it's either old school or new school Ark Survival Evolved. Let's have a listen it's again. Definitely not Ark. Oh, you reckon definitely not Ark? I'm pretty sure it's I'm pretty damn sure it's not. All right, we'll have another listen. If you're listening along at home, oh, I say it was Dead Nation that was given away. On the PS3. Sorry, it was Dead Nation that was given away on the PS3. Uh, okay, it Dead Nation. It was probably yeah before I had. I probably didn't have the PS Plus back then, and then they gave yeah. away the PS4 version when they remastered it or whatever. Yeah. Okay, you reckon it's that? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, if you're listening along at home and you think you know what this week's What's That Sound is, send us a private message to our Facebook page, and if you're correct, we'll send you across a free game. Easy as that. Ooh, not really that easy. It's not. A, it's a tricky one. But um, we'll tell you what the answer is on next week's show. Let's move on to the next segment, which is Last Words. <laughs> All right, uh, Snoogs, you got any last words? Can I talk about a game that I'm going to be playing this week? You can, if you like. Yeah. So, once again, a big shout-out to the guys at Bandai Nemco because we've been able to try Project Cars number two. Yes, Project that's Cars about, two. That's about all I'm going to say on it at the moment because I haven't started it yet. Um, there will obviously be a review and everything up um, once we're allowed to put it up. Mm-hmm. But uh, keep keep the space open. Sounds good. Um, that's probably it from me. That's all you got to say? Yeah. What about you, Ross? Any last words from yeah. you, our special guest for the week? No, back to the Destiny 2 grind for me. And <laughs> uh, I will be streaming shortly. So, yeah, I mean, that's it. As I said earlier, uh, I love to chat with people in, in the chat. So, you know, ask me questions. Just talk to me in general. I don't care if it's not game related or not. Awesome. Look, uh, if you want to, all the links to Ross's uh, bits and pieces, his Twitch, his Facebook, and all that sort of stuff will be in the description for the podcast. So the, if you want to check out what they are and you can't remember what they are, just have a look in the description. It is all there. Before we disappear and before I let you go, Ross, going back to the grind, I've got yep. a quick five minute pop quiz for you. Okay. I'll see how we go. <laughs> it's a Destiny pop quiz. So let's see. You claim to be this big Destiny fan. Yep. Let's see. Let's see how much you actually know about Destiny. I haven't gone too okay. hard on you though. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm not going to ask you to recite coding from Destiny One's DLC or anything because I don't reckon the, de- <laughs> the devs know how to do that. Question number one: What is the name of the Hive's main fortress on the moon? That's a hard one. The Hive's Bane Fortress. Yep, on the moon. Uh, no, I can't think. Starts with an H. Horatio. That's close, because it starts with a H also. <laughs> um... No, you, you've got me something on that one. I can't no, think. okay, that one's Hellmouth. Hellmouth, that's right. Yeah, listen to me, big, yeah. 
big toughie knowing the answers because I wrote the questions. <laughs> what is the name of the land-based attack vehicle used by the Fallen? The land-based attack vehicle used by the Fallen. Um, Pike. Yeah, that's right. Now, this one I didn't actually write the answer to, so hopefully you get it right. What is the name of the main currency in Destiny? Easy one. Glimmer. 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 Easy. Yes. Well done. Yep. Beautiful. We're going good. we got two from three. Question four. Name the three character classes and their species choices. Three character classes, are, as in uh, are Hunter, Titan, and Warlock. Yep. And species are human, exo, and awoken. Beautiful. Well done. Last question. Who is Banshee44? Banshee44 is the postmaster. No. No? One more, one more go. Go on. Not sweeper bot. Banshee forty four is. Oh no! It's the gun. It's the um, gunship. Yes, that's better. <laughs> well done. What is, that brings a good question. What's the uh, the postmaster's name? Is, is it like Katie or something? Mm. Not sure, Neil. He's oh, really yeah. sitting here going, "They have names." Yeah. <laughs> Postmaster is just the postmaster, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, Kate, no, it's Katie. Katie. Or Cardi. Cardi 5530 oh, or some shit. Ha <laughs> I was right. Because yeah, of another XO. Yep. How good am I? Yeah. There you uh, go. You know more than I do. I'm not I'm not the master. You are. It's because I, I, I often have to go to the postmaster because half my shit gets left in the battlefield because I <laughs> don't see it or something. It's like, oh, there's some stuff that I've forgotten to big up. Anyway. Well done, Ross. You did very well there. You got, uh, what was that, four out of five? Four out of five, yep. I'm happy with that, mate. That's a pass mark in my book. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you very much for coming and joining our podcast this week, mate. No, thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure to be here and to be chatting with you. Awesome, man. Fantastic, mate. Thanks Thanks a lot for that. You've been a part of our community for ages, so it was our pleasure to have you on, and we appreciate you taking the time out of grinding on Destiny. (laughs) No, any time. Any time at all. All right. Beautiful. Uh, you finished uh, Snooks? Anything else? I, I wrote in the uh, in our little chat that we've had today that I have a little something new to throw in. Oh, yeah. What was that? So you can you can cut and paste it because, you know, might, maybe because, you know, the end for this one, just because it's something a bit different. Well, it's mm-hmm. not something a bit different. It's, it's an old thing that we're going, well, that I've been looking to reboot uh, mm. a little bit differently, though. So the last week or so, I was having a chat to our good mate, Red, but uh, I had, had a bit of a chat to him about one of his most favourite um, seg- segments, and that was The Shout. Oh, yes. So yep. I'm, th- I'm thinking of bringing it back. Okay, yep. But I'm going to do something a little bit differently. So previously before it was, um, you know, commenting on posts, getting in uh, and joining the community. At, at the moment, it's, it's growing into something a little bit differently. We've got the, the user-created content where we, we shout out people who are integrating on that. Mm-hmm. This one, as I'm sure a lot of people have seen, our user base has started to really ramp up and grow. We're up over 58 now, I believe. Mm-hmm. Five eight six five thousand eight hundred. I've got five thousand eight hundred and sixty three. Yes. So, in no uncertain order, just having a bit of a shout out to some of our newest members. So, first and foremost, obviously we've got Red because he's passed on the the shout torch to me. Uh, we've also got Riccio Loglin, Thomas Morton, Ken Hopper. Torren Hunt, Renee Joseph, Luke Elu, Philip Graham, Dean James Gill, Lacey Smith, Giovanni Placino, Stuart Fells, and Heath Cruz. So 
welcome. Welcome to the Aussie Gamers family. And hopefully we get to see a bit more of you around the page. Make sure you jump in, say good day, check us out, Salve, uh, whenever we're streaming over at Aussie Gamers TV. You can join us on Discord as well whenever we're doing many different things there. So mm -hmm. jump in, engrace yourself in the community, have a bit of fun. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, about, work, we'll work that into a segment somewhere through the show from, from now on and you can do something like that. What are we calling it? Snoog Shout. <laughs> Shouting from the Snoog Tops. I don't know. <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll, we'll spitball we'll it. We'll, it. Work yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll work on we'll it. We'll work on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Snoogs. Thanks, Ross. Uh, and thank you very much to everybody who's listened and gone all the way to the end of the podcast. We appreciate you being here. So, uh, as always, I am Lucas. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of tuned out a bit. I'm I'm Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I switched off. Uh, <laughs> and I have been snoogs. Thank you, everyone. Fuck. Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are once again at the end of this week's show. If you're still hungry for more video game content, head over to the Aussie Gamers Express Facebook page and give us a like. We also have a heavy presence over on Twitter, so give at AussieGamers12 a follow. And also our YouTube channel is there waiting for you to give it the love that it deserves. This podcast is available for your convenience through iTunes, Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. Thanks again for listening and I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Aussie Gamers Express video game podcast. <laughs>